So you're shopping around for filaments and not sure which one to look for? Well today we are going to talk about Sunlu's premium filament. So stick around, see you guys inside. Hey guys, welcome to today's video. As I said, we are going to be looking specifically at Sunlu filament today. So. This video was sponsored by Sunlu. They did send me some filament to give a shot and take a look at and see if it is something that I want to put in. So we are going to go put it to, we're going to put Sunlu against Inland's filament for some discussions with quality, color, different things like that as we go through this video. But this is mainly going to be a talking point about Sunlu filament. So um, I'm going to be open and honest. When I got into 3D printing, I was told to stay away from Sunlu filament. Um, I told it was very difficult to work with and now that I've actually tried it It's it's not hard to work with at all. It is There are a few things that I had a problem with with it, but there's a lot that I like about it, too so I want to make sure that we cover the good the bad and What you need to make sure you know before you pick up a box of sun filament so As you guys can see here on the table. I have two models they're identical. They're the same model, printed on the same printer. This one is inland filament. This one is Sunlu filament. And I'm going to talk about they were printed with the same exact file, same exact printer, same exact settings. And I'm going to talk about settings and stuff with Sunlu filament to make it easier for you to use as soon as you get it. So, kind of one of those things. Before I really deep dive into this stuff, if you're new here to the channel and you're interested, this is the first of many videos that you're gonna see me talking about different filament brands and different things like that. So make sure if you're new or have any questions 3D printing, hit that subscribe button. Join the crew here as we talk about all kinds of 3D printing, including a video will be coming out soon on how to print this Miranda class starship from Star Trek that is seen in movies, uh, I think three different TV series this guy was involved in um, and doing it large scale like you see here because these are pretty good size pretty good size for what they are so make sure you hit the subscribe button if you have any questions in regard to 3d printing make sure you leave it down in that comment down below I want to know what your questions are so because your questions help me help me make new content and also help you get moving forward because I do try to answer your guys's questions as best I can so before we, like I said, let's hop over, let's get into the nitty gritty of Sunlu filament. So first off, we're gonna start off with the box. Now this is not the white filament that I use. This is a silver silk that I actually had on hand, but the boxes are identical, which is great. And one of the things that I wanna definitely point out here that came very important to me was I noticed this. Now most 3D printers are 1.75, 0.02 millimeter tolerance. So that's actually really good. This is a 1.75 spool, um, so it'll fit most of your, your printers very well. Now I did notice, um, and I'll show a picture of this, um, probably over here it'll pop up, that when I printed, I noticed when it was going through my filament sensor and that, that it actually chewed off a bunch. And with the inlet, I don't have this problem, so I was a little worried about the tolerance of was this truly 1.75 and with a 0 0.02 millimeter tolerance it is a little bit larger than 1.7 it was actually 1.76 when i checked a few spots on the spool but you know it still fits it still works so keep that in mind if you're working with anything smaller than 1.75 this is not going to work for you you want 1.75 or higher um, just keep that in track but the filament was very consistent in its in its width as it as I checked the filament spools in different spots. Um, so the flaking could have very much been just, there was just, who knows? Um, it was just extruder erosion in the end. But one of the things I do love about their packaging is this chart. So it shows me exactly my print temperatures, my tolerance, and my print diameters that are available. Whether I'm using PLA, PLA plus, silk it just kind of whatever filament you're using they're presenting you the data right on the box for all of them i don't see that in every filament that i use i'll tell you inland they only have what you bought that's your tolerance for that spool and i can tell you their pla and pla plus totally different temperatures needed this guy they give you everything on the box i can cut this out 
put it on my wall, and I will have a reference chart. This is awesome packaging to have this information in one spot. I don't see this very often. So that is one thing I'm gonna definitely pick out the box. It's a good cardboard box, good sturdy, protects the spool. But let's go down into the spool. Now this is a silver silk. The spool itself, very similar to the J.O. spool. Uh, Sun Lu and J.O. are actually partner companies, um, from what I understand. So the spool is very similar. I did notice the J.O. spool actually stood taller than the Sun Lu spool, because I had problems with the Sun Lu spool on my, on my spool, on my reels. I did not have that problem with the Sun Lu spool. So definitely great thing. You guys can see here the silver silk. It's a great color, which is an awesome thing. Um, I'm really actually kind of anxious to print with this one. Um, if you know a project that I can use silver with, comment down below, let me know. But I'm gonna hop over to color. They sent me a spool of PLA white, PLA plus white. So you guys have seen my videos from Inland. When I think white, I think white, like you see back on the wall. And I had this with JO2. It's more of a pearl white when it comes out and it's finished printing. It's not a pop white um, that I would expect to see. Now you look at the Inland, that's a pop and white. That's white. This is more of an off-white pearl is when it comes out to. Um, and you can kind of see side by side here. They definitely stand out. Um, this one is a, definitely a more off-white where this is definitely the pearl white. Now granted, you're printing a model. You're gonna paint it. Who cares about color, right? Some people, they print deliberately in the color that they're going for and a color match is very particular. I run into this problem with Inland. I run into this problem with every manufacturer trying to find a good red, trying to find a good gold. Um, because sometimes I don't want to paint this. I just want to print and run with it. Um, so the color, not really a problem, but be aware that it will be a little bit of an off-white instead of a brilliant white that you get from Inland. So printing quality, big thing here, big thing here. Um, it came out great. I was very impressed by the quality, the detail, the supports came off. I do need to adjust my retraction because I did have stringing with the Sunlu. Um, and that could have been a temperature thing too, because when you look at the PLA plus, you're printing anywhere from 10, 210 to 235. I print anywhere from usually 210 to 215. So I may have been on the low end for this one. Um, and actually, I think I printed these at 220, just to kind of compensate for the two. 220 is a max for PLA plus for inland filament. So I have took one to the max and I took one to the midline. When it comes to temperatures on these boxes, I usually start at the midline. And then I will work up usually, um, depending on the quality that I get through a calibration cube or different something along that line. It's always good to do like a calibration cube or something when you're trying a new filament to kind of see how it's going to work with your printer. You don't want to start a big project and it gum up halfway through uh, because you weren't burning your filament hot enough or you got a ton of stringy and just makes the project look horrible. You just don't want to do that and that's something you got to keep in mind as you go through these projects that you want to make these things look as beautiful as possible. So there are a lot of good things about Sunlu that I wasn't even aware of because I had always heard bad rap. And um, I know a lot of guys at 3D Print that got me into the hobby three or four years ago and they always told me, like I said, to stay away from this. I'm not gonna stay away from it. I like this filament. Price point, they're a little bit higher than Inland is. Inland runs about, for a spool of white PLA, one kilogram is about $16.99. And then tax, of course, on top. For the Sunlu filament, for the standard PLA Plus, it runs about $18.99 to $19.99, which is pretty much a very standard range price range. So they are very competitive in the price range. It is just make sure you're looking at the color of what you're wanting to do. This guy, solid, great detail on it. I was very happy with the amount of detail that I got from PLA. Um, this model came out great. It's one of those things I look forward to actually painting and finishing this one for another video where I will discuss, let's print this guy. Because the Reliant, um, the Reliant, well, I mean, is the most notable of this class ship with Star Trek. So um, we will definitely do a Wrath of Khan revisit 
on printing this ship and we're going to use the Sunlu edits to do that. So all in all, would I recommend Sunlu? Yeah, I would. Um, it's definitely a good filament. I actually took a look at some of their other filaments. Their rainbow is pretty cool. Um, how it prints. Um, I'm looking to possibly get a spool of the rainbow PLA. Um, and also I'm kind of curious about their PETG. So you will guys probably see video in coming months, probably right before Christmas, with me talking about their PETG. And Sunlu is a, a actually a printer manufacturer as well. They make the Sunlu S8 and S8 Pro. Um, it is a, actually a large scale printer, similar to my CR10s for almost half the price. Um, I'm kind of curious how they're getting getting the price point down that low, but I haven't had one to try. Um, I did purchase one a long time ago, um, and it came damaged, and I sent it back, and I just never revisited it. So, but it is a competitive, um, that's a real competitive price, price point for the CR10 size area. Um, I think that's the only printer that they actually offer directly from Sunlu. So um, eventually one of those days, if you guys are curious about it, we'll see about getting it here in the shop and take a look at it. I know there's other YouTube videos out there, other creators have done it, but it's kind of one of those things. Maybe one of these days we'll get in there. So all in all, filaments, they come out really well. The models came out really well with the Inland versus the Sunlu. Which one would I choose? Honestly, I choose both. But all in all, the Sunlu, there's a lot of great colors out there. There's a lot more color variation, which is really great. And also, keep in mind that their product list is quite large. From SPLA, wood, silk, ABS, HIPS, PETG, flexible TPU. I mean, they've, got, they've even got PLA carbon fiber available for you, all from one manufacturer. So it is something to definitely take a look at and try out. So hopefully you guys have found this information helpful. If you have any questions or want to see me print something with that silver silk, let me know in the comments down below. Um, and also if you're new here and you found this helpful, make sure you hit that subscribe button for more stuff on the channel. I really do appreciate you guys coming to see us today and hope to see you guys in the next video.